one man will sin one time he said, and a man who takes no thought for eternity, he, he's wise for a moment that he becomes a fool forever. You see, you guys got to think you got it all figured out. That's There's why Paul said over there. He was right unto a man, but in the end there are the ways of death. People, I'm telling you, I mean, you're out here cruising around, the weather's getting a little bit better out here, you're starting to come out, you're starting to hang out with your buddies, you're starting to drink a little bit, but I'm telling you, God can come back right now and require your very soul. The question is, is where are you going to spend eternity when you close your eyes here on this earth right now? You see that? I mean, I've been out here many times, there was a shootout that happened right here a couple years ago, and it could be with your name, a bullet to have your name written on it tonight, right? Center. And if you die, you don't got to be living in sin to die. You don't got to be old to die. You don't got to be young to die. All you got to do is be. When God shows up. But what, what, what is going to happen when God does show up and you're not ready? Can you imagine the people that are in hell right now? Can you imagine what the people in hell right now would tell you? That you think that I'm, I'm a crazy or I'm a tough preacher? What would the people in hell right now think if I'm back to talk to you? What would they tell you right now? They would be begging you. They would be crying. They would be pulling your legs. They would be pulling your hair saying, don't come to this place, no hell. You see, there was a man named uh, Lazarus. He said it was Lazarus and the rich man. And his brother preached earlier. He's begging for a drop of water right now. And right now, you've got a beaten heart. You've got bread in your lungs. It's like Halloween out here. You've got all the chance in the world to repent. But you know what? You keep heart in your heart. You keep sitting in your Proverbs 29 1 says that you'll be cut off suddenly and that without remedy. People, I'm telling you, if God cuts you off, you're finished. You don't got no reviews. You don't get a second chance. Read the Bible for yourself. Do you guys read the Bible for yourself? You need to. No, but I accept gay people. You accept gay people as what? What do you accept them as? Well, yeah, they're people, but that doesn't mean they're going to heaven. We're, we're talking, we want people to go to heaven rather than go to hell. There's no gay people in God's kingdom. He built a big old around it. You know, there's no illegals because gays, gays are illegals in God's kingdom. You know, you want, you want all the illegals to come in here and stuff, destroy America. Well, let me tell you something. God doesn't let any illegals into his kingdom. No, you have big old wall around God's kingdom. Big old wall with pearly gates around God's kingdom. And when you uh, illegals, you sinners who are the illegal aliens in God's kingdom try to get into his kingdom on judgment day, you'll be out Hey, let us in. We want to come into the party. We heard there's a, a lamb supper going on. The, the, the bride supper going on. To let us in, Jesus. And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That, you know, the most terrifying, the most terrifying verses in the Bible come from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where he said, many will come to me on that day. I mean, that's uh, tonight's a perfect example. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. What's a worker of iniquity? A, nerd, a worker of iniquity is a sinner. Iniquity is sin. And the Bible says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Sure, in a second. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. Yes. What would you like to say? I've always been agnostic. Always been agnostic, okay. Like, um, I appreciate your honesty with that. But after watching you guys tonight, I'm a fucking atheist. <laughs> okay. So she's gone from agnosticism to atheism. Somewhere, she said because of our preaching. So somewhere, somewhere in our preaching, I blame Brian. Somewhere in our preaching, she went from not knowing if there's no God to suddenly knowing everything about the entire universe that there definitely is no God. So I didn't realize that Brian's preaching had the power to inform that woman that the, of the entire existence of the universe, there is no God. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. No. Yes, there is a God. You know him by conscience and creation. See, you're, you're here in the Bible Belt of America in the 21st century. You you know that there's a God. And 
weather, North Pole, if they will properly respond to the minimum amount that God has given him, conscience and creation, he will reveal himself to them more and more. The Bible said God is a rewarder of those who seek him, who diligently seek him. You need to diligently seek him. But if you read the Bible and you see it says, it says, uh, you know, the fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God and you like, you like to have sex outside of marriage, and then you close your Bible and say, that's not for me, then God's not going to reveal himself to you anymore. If you, uh, if you look in the Bible, and then it, it tells you clearly that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God, and you like getting wasted, and you close your book and say, not for me, or you try to, well, maybe he doesn't really mean drunkenness, or, well, I'm not drunk all the time, so that's okay. No, you're not properly responded to the minimum amount that he's given you. So God won't reveal himself to you more and more. But, you know, we've got guys, let's take a little poll here. Uh, let's see, I've been, uh, I, uh, let's see, I accepted Christ, let's see, 32 years ago, and I am still having revelation, still learning more and more about him. As I step out in faith more and more, he reveals himself to him more. How long have you been a Christian, Brian? What? what? How, how many years is that? Like? <laughs> 15, 15 years. 15 years. Is God still revealing himself to you more and more? How about How long have you been a Christian, Jimbo? Uh, you guys, God still revealing himself to you more and more, Austin? God still revealing himself to you more and more? Abe, is God still revealing himself to you more and more? Nolan, God still revealing himself to you more and more? See, this is how it works. You, you properly respond to the knowledge that God has given you in the Bible, and you obey him. When he says uh, that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom, you know, you put down the bottle, you pick up the Bible, he says, you know, and he looks at you, okay, you obey him. That's how you know you love Jesus and he'll love you. You respond properly and he reveals himself to you more and more. That's awesome. Thank you, God. Be Saturday, guys. Thank you, God, for revealing himself to you more and more. How about you, ladies? Who's ready? Who's ready to get saved? There's, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be guys out there who are going to try and get you drunk tonight. There's going to be guys trying to get you drunk tonight. Ladies, public service announcement. If a guy you do not know is trying to get you drunk, is trying to buy you free drinks, he doesn't think you're awesome or special. He wants to get up your skirt, which won't be too hard the way you girls are dressed. So if a guy is buying you free drinks, he only wants one thing. He's going to take you into an alley or into the back of his mom's pinto and have his way with you, and uh, then you're going to end up with an abortion. Uh, here's here's a guy. You know, you know, you say we're hateful. Here's a guy over here who drove all the way up from Atlanta. where he was preaching at the abortion clinic in Atlanta this morning. Came all up, all the way up here to talk to you. And there were girls down there having abortions, probably because on some other Friday or Saturday night they got drunk with some loser's baby and got pregnant. Didn't want to have some loser's baby, so they pay a doctor to chop up their baby and sell it off for parts. That's wickedness. See, that's why the Bible tells you to be sober-minded so you don't end up end up getting pregnant and you're not ready for it. Then you kill a baby. You kill a baby. That's what happens every day, every day, every morning. Every morning, Monday through Saturday or so, it's happening in abortion clinics. You think God's going to bless this nation? God's wrath is going to come upon this nation. But you could be spared. You could be spared from God's wrath. You can be spared from God's wrath. But ladies, we talked about we talked about uh, God revealing himself to you more and more because you obey him. Jesus himself said, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. We got some prom kids over there, prom kids. We want to tell you our message. God has sent us out here today. Thank you, Father, for knowing it would be prom night. The drunkenness and fornication that's going to take place on prom night. Young ladies, young men, don't be getting drunk. Just use prom night to just enjoy each other's company. Have a nice meal. Have a nice dance. But quit with the drunkenness and the fornication. How many, how many girls lost their virginity on, on prom night? You end up losing your virginity on prom night. You end up losing your virginity on prom night. I mean, that's to be saved for your husband. Your virginity is supposed to be the, the wedding gift that you give your husband. And instead, you're going to give away your virginity tonight to some guy who'll probably dump you before graduation day. Probably dump you before graduation day. Probably just wants to get a piece of meat here on prom night. 
That's why you need to stay away from the booze. And if he's got a hotel set, a hotel room set up for you later on tonight, call a cab, call an Uber, and get out of there. Flee. You need to flee uh, your youthful passions. No, we can't shut up. We cannot shut up. The Lord Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent. No, I don't know where your hand's been. Yeah, that's probably where it has been. I wouldn't doubt it. See, that's why, see, sodomites, that's why God uh, burns his trash. That's what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. See, God has a recycling plant. We're out here, I've seen a lot of recycling bins out here in Charlotte. We're out here to tell you about God's recycling program. We got any real green people out there? Any green people? Hug, earth huggers, tree huggers? And I'm not raising my hand for that. But, uh, you know, God has a recycling program, and uh, it's called repentance and salvation. If you, if you are a filthy, rotten sinner, God is willing to recycle you into something useful to him, a holy saint. If you will repent, if you will forsake your sin, if you will acknowledge your sin before a holy and righteous God and forsake that sin and turn from it, then God will recycle a filthy sinner into a holy saint. Live obediently to him. But in the end, once judgment day comes along, the recycling program ends. It's got an expiration date. And just like Sodom and Gomorrah shows us, uh, God ends up burning his trash. That's the message of Sodom and Gomorrah, that God burns his trash. Those people, they couldn't even find ten righteous people in the whole area of Sodom and Gomorrah. That'd be like somebody saying, God, if I could just find ten righteous people uh, in Charlotte, I'll, I'll spare them. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got a six-person head start, and I'm not even sure if God could find six righteous people in downtown Charlotte tonight. That's what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah couldn't even find ten righteous people. They would have been spared. So God says, you're not willing to repent. God burns his trash. That's what's going to happen on Judgment Day. It says the angels will bind you hand and foot, cast you into a lake of fire. No homos in God's kingdom. No homos in God's kingdom. Now, if you want to be a flaming homo, God will grant you your wish because he burns his trash after Judgment Day. Repent. Time to get saved, folks. Austin, you ready? Austin, Austin, you ready? Time to get ready. Time to get saved, folks. So the Bible says, call upon the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Return to the Lord, for he is rich in mercy. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You ready to get saved? You ready to get saved over here? You ready? You ready to get saved? Read that. That's important information. Put that in your pocket. That's it. No one serious says that. Hey, you're going to be in hell crying out, saying, God, won't you just send someone to my family to warn them? Won't you send them? Oh, just a drop of water. Won't you put it on my tongue? And God will say, no. You might just look up from hell and see a street preacher being called by Abraham. You might just look up from hell and see Jesus in heaven. And you'll behold the chasm that cannot be crossed. But this day, you can have a bridge from hell to heaven, from death to life, from hatred to love. You can cross the bridge by trusting in Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through Him. Trust the Lord today, folks. For tomorrow might not come. There was a rich man we tried so hard to prepare for a famine, building up storehouses. And before the famine came, God said, No fool! For this night your soul is required of you. Many of you prepared for the night. You picked out your best shoes, your best outfit. It's Saturday night. You worked all week. Everybody's working for the weekend. You prepared for tonight. But have you prepared to meet thy God? Have you prepared to meet God? Who will pass both your body and soul into hell. He can destroy your body and your soul. How long before you stumble out of a bar and stumble into hell? About four hours. About four hours before you die, you better get right with God.